it was basic training, right? And so that's actually was the hardest part for me because I was going back to basics. Not to mention, hey, Navy SEAL, come clean this fucking toilet. Yeah. <laughs> a lot. A little humble. So I was, they'd shove the whole humble pie down my throat, man. It was no, I had to strip it all down, and that was years, man. Legion's very strict. This is gonna hurt. It's time, it's time for, the for the Suffering Podcast. 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 And a, a couple of weeks, nothing crazy. But when I walked out of jail, man, I signed my DD-214. Clean, no reserve. I'm out. And I have no probation, nothing. So I'm like fully clean and clear. And I moved into a civilian job, being a supervisor for a, a private real, residential real estate developer. And that was cool. But I started stacking some bad habits quick. I mean, the day I got finished out of the military, I was doing Adderall, Xanax, smoking weed, drinking at night, kind of take the edge off for about a year. And then a, a year, uh, at that year, I started snorting fentanyl at night. Every night for like a year on top of all this, but I'm also still being very successful. Now I'm the CEO of a cannabis distribution company in California. I'm pitching Holy deck. Shit. I'm raising millions of dollars. I'm working for a big venture capital. So I'm in a high rise. I'm like meeting with congressmen and getting all these things. So I'm like, look, look, I'm, I'm good, right? Whatever I'm doing is working, right? So Well, that's the mark of a lot of good addicts, and just that, so you know. I, I was easy at yeah. lying to myself. <laughs> I could lie to myself, go, look, look, this is but you can't bend reality that long. And oh. I came crashing down. This story got really good real fast here. Yeah. yeah I took to, I, I didn't know that. That's no. actually because you, and I know people in my own personal life, ultra successful. And when you're, when you have these little things, deficiencies, the bosses, the big bosses will say, yeah, but he's doing such a great job. Yeah. So we'll, we'll yeah. give him a little grace on this yeah. one. It's not a problem till it's a problem. And that's right. exactly what it was. And I turned into a liability like overnight. It was like, Golden boy, next day you're out pretty much. And so, and I lost everything, man. I lost the job, the girl, the the whole life gone, really. Money, everything. Just, it was pretty much gone over, overnight. Well, it took about three months to, for the ax to really fall. Then I find myself homeless in my truck, going to kill myself. I have a sawed off shotgun in my, in my, and I'm sitting there for like three days going, man, it was like the smoke settled. And like, I just realized I had nothing left. I was like, bro. I used to, now everything's gone. I can't point to anything. And I had no money, no gas. I was like, oh, this is how it happens. You just sneaks up on you and then you're you, fucking. You traversed the mountain in reverse. Oh man, it was brutal. It was a brutal, but I wasn't even sad. It wasn't like I was sitting in there crying. I was just like matter of fact, like, all right, how do I do this and not make too much fucking mess, man? Serious. It was, it was matter of fact. And, and then I had that authentic voice of God speak to me, man. It was like, man, you're being a huge pussy, right? Sack up. You have a mom, a sister, right? You, you're you're being super selfish right now. Lock it on. And that's when I made the decision to join the French Foreign Legion. I was in France eight days later. You, you know yeah. what happened is all that stuff, all the shit that he did to become a SEAL kicked in at that moment because that's that that desire to be something more, yeah. right? Yeah. And you're like sitting there going, oh, this is how it happens. You know, oh, I guess I'm going to blow my brains out. And then yeah. you're like, wait a second, what the fuck am I doing? Yeah. I was a fucking SEAL. You might not have said that, yeah. but that had to click it somewhere subconsciously that all the shit that you did. That voice of God is so prevalent. You had it. I've had it. And so it's that one moment when you have total clarity of thought yeah. and you just say, what the fuck am I doing? Yeah. Like, and it, some people... Our good friend Mike Felice never really got to that point. Mm -hmm. Maybe he had it and he just ignored it. Mm -hmm. He fell on deaf ears. But when you hear it and you start climbing out of that hole, because you're at the bottom right now. Like you you were at the top. Now there's nowhere to go. You got no, no more plan B. Yep. And now you start climbing up. How old were you when this happens? Thirty four. So okay, you, so it's four years ago. Yeah. You're 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 a little long in the tooth to go to French Foreign Legion. I mean, this isn't yeah. Abbott and Costello shit. Yeah, man. I was going to Legion selection at thirty four, man. So I don't even know how you get into Legion selection. Yeah. You just fly. There's only one way to do it. You fly there, you go to the base, and you knock on the door. I That's actually, it. I got a question that uh, a Navy vet asked yeah. me to ask a Corey Karras. Uh, he said, um, can you share a memorable experience or challenge you faced while serving in the French Foreign Legion that was distinctly different from your time with the Navy SEALs? Hmm. There's a lot of old tradition. Right. The Legion, you know, 200 year old, old French. And so there was a lot of cool moments where I'm in these rooms with, you know, 20 guys and there's 20 different languages being spoken. That's a trip. You know, guys from Ukraine, Belarus, um, Belarus, you know, 
Mongolia, Thailand, Colombia, all in one room, man. So I had a lot of poignant moments where I was like, wow, this is pretty, this is a trip. I couldn't even tell you what the French Foreign Legion does. Yeah. So they're the, they, for, it's a, it's a 200 year old organization that was started by an old French king to get foreigners who were causing problems in bars and shit in France back onto the battlefield from a previous war and fighting for France with the carrot of French citizenship. It was modeled after the Roman legions. You know, mm -hmm. serve your time. You'll give you French citizenship, yada, yada, yada. And they fought in every war for France since Algeria to Afghanistan. Wasn't Lawrence of Arabia, was he French Foreign Legion? Possibly. I th I'm not, I'm not quite I sure. where you get this shit Didn't from. you see the Peter O'Toole movie? Just Possibly shot. that white cappy hat walking through the desert. Yeah. That's the old, that's the, it's a trip, dude. I would look good with that fucking thing on. Yeah. On a horse. Yeah, it would look good. <laughs> Did you ride a horse's? I never rode a horse. <laughs> we walked. So you've already been through the, the preeminent, arguably one of the hardest training periods through Navy SEAL training. Now you're in French Foreign Legion training. What was that like? Was it in comparison? You know, it's, I mean, it's Army Infantry Boot Camp. That's pretty much what it is, right? But it's just with that French Legion flavor, a little bit more rustic, a little bit more pirate. It was basic training, right? And so that's actually was the hardest part for me because... I was going back to basics. Not to mention, hey, Navy SEAL, come clean this fucking toilet. Yeah. <laughs> a lot. A little humble. So I was, they'd shove the whole humble pie down my throat, man. It was no, I had to strip it all down, and that was years, man. Legion's very strict, very strict discipline. You walk across the grass wrong, they're going to put you in jail. I'm not even lying. They're very strict about everything, salute officers, everything's very formal. And I went on two deployments with them that went to South America doing interdiction of gold mining and then we also deployed oh and the, those bad those real bad play, like the human uh, they're like they're, they're like human toilets it's it's awful bro well, it's a trip down there it's like the wild west French Guiana down in South America border Suriname and there's just crazy what's going on down there so you this the, did you see this as as your last chance or just your second chance I was just like, I knew I needed to use it as a vehicle of self-development. I needed to figure out what I was doing that kept fucking up my life, you know? And I was like, I need some time just to burn off some karmic debt, too. I needed to think. I needed to just unplug. It was just I, uh, all these things. And I wanted to write a good story, right? deliberate. So I never heard of a Navy SEAL being a foreign legionnaire. I'm the only person to ever do it. So it was um, a trip. Very difficult, cold, man, harsh, stripping it back down to basics. And then once you got through all that, did you, like, you, you, your, your, your peaks and valleys are crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, most people's peaks and valleys are mild. Yeah. Your peaks and valleys are, like, way up here, <laughs> yeah. way down here, and now yeah. you're way back up here to, to go from elite to nothing to elite again. Yeah. You had to feel some sort of accomplishment. I felt good. I felt really good. And then, you know, that you're there a couple of years, and then I realized I wasn't happy still. That was a moment that actually was fucking scary because I go, there's nowhere else to go. I started looking into Ukraine and, you know, contracting and Mercenary stuff. Mercenary stuff. Yeah, I started looking into all that stuff. And I go, bro, where does this end? <laughs> I, I, where, where am I running to? Well, who am I running? I'm running away from myself, really. I go, I want to live a life, man. I want to have, you know, a wife and kids. And, you know, I'm just, it's lonely, man. So I was like, look. I got to do internal work here. So that's when I started kind of diving into better principles and practices. So what, what were some of the, what, what was the, the tipping point of that where you start diving in, you'd start doing that deep dive to figure out what the underlying issue is. Yeah. I knew it was structured. I needed to get discipline. Even in the Legion, I was like, I need to set my own wake up times. I need to start working out consistently. I was training, but I like, lock it on every day type things and stay away from all the negative shit, you know, doing, bars and did all that, that stuff. Uh, did that help you with your with your crisis that you have in your own head? Like as your Oh, I started getting massive clarity. And that was when I f really started living aligned where all my actions were aligned with my desired outcomes. That's when I started feeling better. I go, oh, okay, you can't be doing all this weird shit over here and expecting this beautiful life. It's not going to go. But your actions towards your de desired outcomes, what's, what's those desired outcomes that you're seeking? So I wanted... First of all, I wanted to get my body a certain way, right? That was the, you know, the physical part. And then I wanted, you know, success. And so started, but I, I knew I wanted to get into coaching and meant because I had, I was like, man, I learned, taught myself how to feel good and proud of myself just off simple daily practices. 
that's what I needed. And I've done all the dumb shit I could tell people what not to do. I was like, I would like to get into that. Well, I got to make sure I'm good first consistently. And so that was the piece I started working on to make sure all that I was good doing all the things daily that were going to allow me to actually walk the walk. So you, you, you wanted to be, get into some sort of mentoring coaching Mm -hmm. program. Did you finally get a chance to do that? And that's my first question. Mm -hmm. All right. So when you first get that taste of helping somebody else, what did that do for your, for your psyche? Well, you know, I, it wasn't my exact goal to get into coaching, but I knew I just wanted to share my story. And so I put up a YouTube video and it blew up. And then I got like hundreds of emails being like, dude, I was going to kill myself. I saw your video like hundreds. And so I was like, that was cool. And that I was like, at least all that pain helped somebody. And so that was the moment where I go, I I could do this, man. And, And then you finally do it. I, so I've watched a lot of your social media. You, you're in the gym. You're working out. You're working hard. And listen, I'm watching it. And I, the other day, I, I was watching something, and I really didn't want to go to the gym. I, I'm telling you right now, I'm about to turn 50. I really didn't want to go. You to go gym. to the gym sometimes. Um, and I watched one of your videos, and I'm like, all right, that's all I needed. <laughs> it was just a spark. Yeah. That's a, you know, it's just a spark. My job is to to ignite the fire. Yeah. Um, but that's what it does. Yeah. That's what it does. And and. It's an enormous sense of accomplishment when somebody comes to you and say, hey, listen, you kind of changed that hairy moment. You're making a no. difference. You're, you're making a difference. Now, do you ever help other veterans? A lot. So a lot of my, cli- a lot of my clients now are former or veterans, you know, got from all over the world too, UK, Australia, all over. A lot of them with similar paths. You, man, you really find out, man, a lot of people have those peaks and valleys. We all suffer the same ways. And a lot of times the answers are the same to kind of get that clarity back. And start building yourself up, get that momentum, get the mojo back, start feeling good about what you're doing again. That's that's a beautiful process. So you watched that. You watched a lot of old time uh, when when somebody got in trouble, the judge used to say, well, you can go to jail or you can join the military. So it's kind of it kind of makes sense that that people who are a little bit lost join in the military because it's it seems to be throughout time. Yeah. But so it's a perfect fit for you. You know, you're 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 connecting with certain people because you're showing your vulnerabilities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and that's, that's the, that's something that's really important. Yeah. It's not easy for people to do. No, you got to be authentic. If you expect people to be authentic with you, you got to be straight up. And also it's nice just spilling up because you don't have any shit in the closet, man. And they're like, Hey, you, Oh yeah. You already talked about it. (laughs) 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 You already spilled the beans, man. So what, what, what do you think your biggest success is as far as uh, reaching out to other people and, and moving them along in their life? Seeing guys be like, you saved my marriage, man. You saved my life. I was, I was suicidal. Now I'm like, now I got this new job and career, man. Over months and months, you know, some people have been working. I have on your program, six, like seeing significant change quick is, is unbelievable. And then when guys like actually grab it by, by the horns and really actually start implementing things because change is, it requires deliberate, decisive action. It really does. You have to start changing your actual daily flow. And that's not easy. It sounded like you you went through all this discipline with these different with seals and legionnaires. It's discipline after discipline after discipline. But you you, you found the your your self discipline. Yeah, you know it was as this was discipline other people were putting on yeah. you, and you just had to follow. But now all of a sudden you have that self reliance. Yeah, that that thing that you were looking for that you were looking for in 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 the mil- in the seals and in the legionnaires is this. Is this what you were looking for? Oh, dude, I love it. I love exactly what I do. I mean, seven days a week I'm on it, and I'm on Zooms every day since I kicked this thing off. And I I couldn't be happier because it's my design life, man, right? It's my my schedule. It's me helping people. It's living in purpose, and you got to walk the walk and teach. And I don't even tell people what to do. I show them where to look to find the answers, right? And they, they, they make it work How did you – uh... How'd you kick uh, like the booze and the drugs and all that? What'd you do? You did that self or you helped, got help somewhere? Man, the fentanyl was the worst thing, right? I can that, imagine. That was like an actual like addiction. That was brutal. You know, opioid addiction. People ever deal with that. That was tough, man. And then, you know, it just I, it just focusing on the greater and the lesser starts falling away. You know, yeah. That's kind of this focus on. If you're what, strong enough mentally, you can do that. You know? But that's the one thing you got going for you. It sounds like you got enough up here. In order to carry you through, mm. you know, you have that, and it's not, it, not everybody has it. Mm. So, you know, it's, it's kind of like, where are you going? Yeah. What are you doing now? He's feeding off of other people's, their, their response to what he's doing. 
You know what I mean? That's a big, big thing, I think. Your whole life seems to be like, okay, what are you doing here? Yeah. Where are you going with this? Yeah. Where are you going? Like, that's, if I'm looking back on your whole life, what you're telling me, it's like, where are you going with this? And I just had this experience with somebody. I'm on the phone with somebody and they're complaining about something. And they're asking me questions and I can tell they're not asking me the question that they want to ask me. Mm. So I would ask them afterwards. It was like six phone calls. I'm like, where are you going with this? And they would get pissed off at me, hang up the phone. Right? Second, they call me up with some other bullshit. I'm like, where are you going with this? <laughs> yeah. Hang up the phone. Finally, the guy goes, well, you're being adversarial. And I said, no, I'm getting frustrated because you're going somewhere and you're afraid to ask me a question. You're afraid to ask me what you really want. Yeah. Just fucking ask me. Yeah, yeah. Just fucking ask me. Yeah. And that's what you did. You yeah. finally, you know, you finally got to where you where you wanted to go. Yeah. And, and it was pulling the trigger, walking into that fear a little bit. Man, can I make this work? Can I actually do this as a living? You know, and that that was scary, right? And not, also was, you know, you know, can I keep this consistent? Can I prove to myself that I'm good and all that? You know, nothing's perfect. But I'll tell you what, I could not be doing anything else. Well, you live in an area where it 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 probably is best not to work as yeah. much as as much as you have to, yeah. Because Jesus, the San Diego weather is the best weather. Man, it's nice, bro. I yeah. love it. Yeah. I was I there. I, and I was I was there when I was like eighteen. You know, she stayed out there. It's I the only place I've ever been to in this country that I would I would move to because everywhere else is pretty much the same. They got a CVS yeah. on every corner yeah, and a Starbucks yeah. and stuff. But San Diego. I, I stayed right. I actually stayed right by Coronado. You know where the yeah. convention center yeah. is, and the Marriotts there, Seaport Village, and the Gasland yeah. Quarter. And I had the best time. But man, that I back I, in the, I tied it back all. In yeah, the, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. Back in the not yeah, early nineties, <laughs> it was really difficult for someone that grew up here to go out there because it was different. It's, people in California are just different. They're, so the, they're yeah, laid the, back. It's like we're high strung. You know, I want to uh, go. I want to go. Yeah. So the they're first like, yeah, time chill. I land in San Diego and we go to go something, go to get something to eat. Now we go to Hooters just because it's mm. something that we yeah. know. The women in Hooters were like any A team in a strip club around here. Yeah. Okay. Hooters. You go to Hooters around here and yeah. and God, I'd look better in a Hooters. Yeah. Yeah. Than some <laughs> of these people. And not. Yeah. I don't want to. That's like a crazy. <laughs> You'd like it. Look at those lines. You, I you would eat naked chicken wings off of my. Belly. No, I would not um, do that. But I walked out there, and that's when I knew it was different. Because the the woman serving me was probably the most gorgeous woman I've ever seen in my life, yeah. outside of my wife. And I have to say that because you know I'm on camera. Yeah. Um, and it was just it was a different mindset. But I can see living out there would be difficult for me because I think I'd get very complacent. Yeah. Because of the there's so much around. Yeah. So where can our audience find you? All right, you got this coaching mm -hmm. program. I know that there's your social media. It's TCAV yeah. official. Yeah, TCAV official on my Instagram. You hit me up on DMs, I am I answer. I don't outsource anything. That is true. Yeah. That is true, and I can speak from experience on that one. Yeah, and also my website, taylorcavanaugh.com. All that traffic goes right to my personal email. So if you go through the contact form, that goes to me, and they have the program stuff. But it gives you a little bit more of the story and the, some pictures and stuff just to kind of get the flow. And my YouTube, TCAV TV, where I dive into those deeper principles. Man, every video, one take, no edits, stream of consciousness. And then I also do gym footage and sessions with guys. Where's that gym in San Diego? Man, I, I go to Metroflex Marietta. It's a uh, Temecula kind of area, a little yeah, bit it's north. A, it's a nice little Man, gym. that's a badass gym, dude. Metroflex Marietta is sick. You got to take a look at this gym. You got to check it out. It's badass. Gym. Me and you are going to go out to San Diego. We're going to go there and do a guest podcast. I'm, I'm in. I'm in. That's what you should do. You should get your own podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It, it's a lot it's of work. It's hard, man. It's yeah, a lot of work. That's what I'm saying. It's Listen. hard. So we're coming to the end of this thing. And, you know, our, our show is all about overcoming adversity, which kind of fits your mold perfectly. Mm. That's why when uh, we were introduced by, uh, by Reed Morin and – I said, this guy fits us mm. perfectly. Let me see what we can do. And sure enough, mm. you were kind enough to, to join us. You've lived this life of suffering. And my opinion, if you don't learn from your suffering, it's such a wasted opportunity. Yeah. There's, that's where the, the, the real growth sits. So all that suffering that you went through, what do you think it's taught you? Man, it's taught, taught me to be grateful in the moment, right? Stay present. It's also taught me to, man, cherish your energy. Don't do things that cause you shame and regret, right? All that stuff. Don't, don't, there's enough suffering, right? External. Don't put more on yourself, self-induced suffering. That's something, man, I still, you know, we all, we all still have to remind ourselves of that and, and be cognizant to not do that. Well, I certainly appreciate you. I appreciate you coming in here, telling this story. It was an honor to speak with you. 
Um, and you know what? I've I've learned quite a bit. I got to be honest with you. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you guys got good vibes. No, seriously, here. I'm I'm very impressed with your whole. It's the fact that you're only 38. It took me to my 50s to get to where you're at. Like, Whoa! To where? Slow down. You ain't there. <laughs> I'm talking about mentally. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Again, you ain't there. Dude, yeah. No. <laughs> I love you, Pop. You know I love you. I'm gonna well. We're going to see afterwards how much you love me. <laughs> and that's going to do it for this episode of the Suffering Podcast, the suffering of a Navy SEAL. And as always, let's think about all the stuff that we learned. Fear can elevate you or bury you. Kids are selfish by nature. Charges aren't convictions. Dreams can get taken away very easily. Second chances don't come often. Action towards desi- Point action towards desired outcomes. Mm-hmm. Don't tell them what to do. Show them where to go. But most importantly, be grateful in the moment. Yeah. I appreciate you coming in, Taylor. I appreciate it so much. And that's going to do it for this episode. Don't forget to go to popple.com, put in the code TSP20 for a 20% discount. Follow us on all social media. That's Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, LinkedIn, OnlyFans. Follow Bobby Crudell at Bobby underscore Crudell. Follow me at Real Kevin Donaldson. And, of course, follow Suffering Podcast. Go to TCAV Official. Check out Taylor. And we will see you on the next episode.